All right, so the experimental design lab, I would look at the mechanics one just to make sure it's very similar to AP Physics and Mechanics. There's two components. There's the design and the analysis. The design portion of the lab and then design analysis are very are, are pretty separate. The design portion of the lab is you have to, given a, a scenario, you have to evaluate and you got to vary a parameter, measure the response, record the response, but you just have to describe the experiment and what you would do to collect what information you would need to collect and analyze in order to extract the information. The second part of the analysis is where you do a, kind of the line of best fit. It's like you're going to plot data, linearize the data, and you're going to extract either from the y-intercept or the slope the information necessary to answer a situation. So let's kind of dig into this one. So students are investigating the relationship between the distance between the current carrying wires and the magnitude of the magnetic force between the wires in the setup shown. Two vertical wires, wire one and two, are connected to power supplies not shown and carry curtains in the opposite direction. Each wire is attached to a board, and the board with wire two is connected to a stationary force sensor. So we have a force sensor. A lot of the times they'll give you the equipment when they're doing this. The boards are held parallel to each other, and di the distance D between them can be adjusted. The students hypothesize that the force exerted by wire one and wire two is proportional to the inverse of the square of the distance between the wires. So we're going to vary the distance and measure the force. So design a procedure that we're going to determine the relationship of the magnetic force exerted on the wires and the distance between the wires. So all you're going to do is you're going to place the two wires, let's see, wires and uh, wires and board a distance away. You're going to measure the distance separating them, separating them D. You're going to then um, record the force on the wires. And then all you want to do is make sure we repeat, repeat steps one through three with five different distances. How many do you do? Just do a few. I just say five. Okay, cool. Uh, that will reduce the experimental uncertainty there, right? So that will take care of the experimental uncertainty portion of that. All right, so describe what quantities could be graphed and how the graph could be analyzed to test the hypothesis. Well, so now if we're just going to say it's inverse to the square of the distance, right? So what they're saying is that they want to say the proportional is proportional to um, the inverse of the square of the distance here. In other words, they think the force is equal to k times 1 over d squared, right? Some constant here. And so you're just going to plot this. This is going to be our x value. This could be a y, and this will be my slope m. So you're going to plot the force versus 1 over d squared. And if the data is linear, looks linear, then the force is inversely proportional to the distance. And that handles that. Okay, so now we're on to the analysis portion of the experimental design. So they're going to give you a setup. They're, they want to determine the experimental value for the magnetic permeability of free space mu naught. The same experimental setup is used. Sometimes they vary it, but sometimes it can be pretty much the same. Um, and the current I is the same for both wires. I showed the length L of the wire segments fixed to the boards are measured. In this experiment, the distance D is held fixed. So here they're not varying the distance. And the force is measured while the current is varied. So they're going to vary the current here. We're going to measure this guy here and collect the data shown below. Indicate what measured or calculated quantities could be graphed to yield a straight line that could be used to calculate the numerical value for mu naught. So we want mu naught to either be the y-intercept or the slope. Of, of that thing. So we have to derive, the first step when you're doing that is we got to derive an expression that connects the force and the current in there. So you have two wires and they have currents going away from each other at a separation distance D. Um, we can start with looking at the equation that we're given in our equation sheet for the forces between two wires. And they give you the integral form in it. It's I DL cross B, right? But you just remember that's IL cross B, 
That's what usually how I write it in the lessons. Um, that's the force between them. And B is the magnetic field due to the other wire. And the, this is the current through a magnetic field, right? And so then what you're going to say is you say like, well, I know the current is I. We know the L. Uh, the cross product you don't have to deal with because the magnetic field is already perpendicular because this guy's generating a magnetic field using our right-hand rule. It's going into the page and then out of the page here and then coming across like this. And then going uh, into the page and then out of the page. Sorry, I did that like that. So it's coming out of the page here. So it's already perpendicular to the current there. And so remember the magnetic field due to a current wire, right? Is gonna be mu naught I. And it's the same I, cause the same current between there over two pi times the distance between them. So this is gonna be mu naught L I squared over two pi D. Now, when you're doing this equation, you gotta recognize what variables are going to be are, are varied. Which ones are, are are fixed and which ones are varied? And the current is varied and the force is gonna force is gonna vary. Those are our two variables there. Everything else is constant, right? So we're gonna if we plot this, so if you want the distance, sorry, the distance, you want mu naught to be the slope, then ultimately the easiest way to do that is just to say, well, this should be x and this should be y. And so then if I plot force on the vertical axis and Li squared over two pi D on the horizontal axis, then that will work, all right? So we wanna do the forces in millinewtons. I guess we're gonna do the forces here. And then we're gonna do on the X axis, we wanna plot uh, L over D are unitless. So this is just gonna be amp squared, Li squared over two pi D, which is measured in amp squared, okay? So now we just need to calculate these quantities here. And so what we're going to do is we'll go and pull up Desmos, um, the AP version here. And easiest way is just make a table for, and we want to, we want to just really modify the I equation, right? So you can just say, um, let's see, we'll make this 2.8, 3.2, 3.6, 4.0. Four point four. Go ahead and put these in just in case you want to do. The, if you want to do the linear regression just to compare against your straight line, you certainly can. Okay, and send then we'll just call this x two, and that's going to be equal to um, i is x one, so it's going to be x one squared. Oops. Squared. squared um, times the L, which is 1.4, divided by 2 pi and D, D is 0 0.005. Let me just make sure it's times. Okay, cool. So then that will give us our, our values here. So that will be our numbers in there. So that's our new X, X values. And then these are our Y, the Y values are just given here. So then um, we're going to do, uh, so their X values go from zero to uh, eight, you know, 860. So this could be two, four, six, eight. So it'd be 200, 400, 600, and 800. And then the Y values go from zero to one. So we'll make this two, four, six, eight, 10, one. So 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1.0, .0 and 1.2, right? Each of these are 0.2 and a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Each of these is going to be 0 0.04. Okay, so then we're going to 349. So this is each of these is 200. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, 200 by 5. Each of these is 40. So 300 is going to be halfway in between. Three, sorry, 340. So 240, 280, 320, 360, so somewhere around here. And then the y value is 0.35. So 2, 2, 4, 2, 8, 3, 2, 3, 6, or maybe around there. 456, 4, 40, 460, 456 is right around there. And then the y value is 0.6. So that's going to be right there. Okay, then 570. So this is. 520, 560, 570 about there, and then and then 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 
point six point six um let's see point six four point six five maybe right around there so that's kind of weird that's not really that let me see if i just got those numbers right 3.2 3.64 okay those are correct 713 640 680 720 little to the left and then y value of one so 1 1.0 is about there and then 868 40 880 860 is about there halfway between those lines and then 1.1 1. 1 is going to be right around there okay so this is six let me just make sure this is 0.7 this is 0.65 okay cool so you know doesn't quite look quite straight <laughs> uh in some ways but you know we just draw our line of best fit that we can and we'll just say it's that you can also compare against your linear regression. You can say the um, y1 is proportional, and you could just make this um, uh, 1.4 divided by 2 pi 0 0.005 times x1 squared. And Oh no. Uh oh, and then we need um we need a slope. Yeah, M. Okay, so that slope would give you our our best fit. But you know, on the graph on the piece of paper, you're gonna pick two lot two dots that are easy to read. So we'll read this one. This will be eight hundred. The Y value would be one point oh two. No, one point Sorry, I'm just thinking about it. Uh, this is 1.1 1 .1 here. Sorry, 1.04, 1 1.08, 1, like 1.06, right? And then what else is easy? This is easy to read. This is about uh, 320. And then the Y value 0 0.4. So then our slope it's going to be 1.06 minus 0 0.4. Now, you have to remember that's times 10 to the negative 3 because this is millinewtons, right? Millinewtons times 10 to the negative 3 divided by 800 minus 320. And so let's see what we get just from our eyeballing our straight line. That's a little bit easier when you do it on paper, which you will have access to. Um, I just want to make sure I have this right. 0.4 is the y value. This is 1.06. Okay, yeah, I think that's right. Uh, divided by 800 minus 320. So I get 1.38 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6. That's really, that's really far off. So I'm curious if I... Uh, if I did that one correctly, um, no, that's pretty close to what they're getting um, on there, on that line of best fit there. So that is, that's just what we get. Oh, we need to put units. Uh, maybe, uh, let's see, this is going to be newtons per amp squared is fine. What you could do there because it's the slope of that guy. Or you could find the units of the magnetic, the permeability in free space um, if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, that will finish the analysis portion of that.